Let me introduce Jacques Attadi, uh, who will join me, who's president of the Positive Planet um, Foundation in Paris. Jacques Attali, welcome. Uh, Jacques, you've been sitting behind listening to the discussion for the last hour and a quarter. Is this a positive future that you can hear well, uh, emerging? There are many things that have been said very interesting and demonstrate that a lot of positive things are happening. But what I call positive doesn't mean that it's optimistic. What I call positive means that it's possible to succeed. There are a lot of potential trumps for the future. Positive means to be uh, useful for next generations. And the question we should have in mind is, what, do what we do useful for next generation, for people which are six years old or not even born? It's not always true. Uh, I would say that if we were doing what was good for next generations 20 years ago, the world would be better today. Uh, let's take an example, California. We, a lot of people here are coming from California. If 20 years before, uh, people have done in California what was good for climate change, for water protection, for electricity, for bridge, for whatever, California will not be in the terrible stage as it is today. Therefore, it's very important for the benefit of people living today to take care of next generation. And I hope we will not make the, main mis the same mistakes worldwide uh, today for the people living in 20 years. What is futurology? Is it astrology with a different title? I mean, I say that <laughs> rather facetiously because... No, you're right. You're right. Because anyone can guess about the future. But there are very few things that are certain. Demography is almost certain. And people should not forget that in uh, 30 years from now, <clears throat> there will be 2.5 billion people in Africa, and will change everything. That at the end of the 21st century, will be more than 4 billion people in Africa, which has changed everything. Let, let's say only on 2015, 2.5 billion people in Africa, the most important continent of the world. And that is for certain. The other things that are almost certain is that we know what kind of new waves of technology is coming. We were talking about uh, augmented or artificial intelligence. I prefer also augmented. Art. But there are other technologies that are coming. But we know that are far, not far from being useful. Genetics, uh, everything which is linked to biotechnology, prothesis, but also something which is not very well addressed, which, on which I sp spend a lot of time myself to understand and to work on it, which is biomimics. Bio? Biomimics which is the fact of imitating the nature to develop new technology. This is a huge wave of change that will totally overthrow what is uh, fashionable today, which is AI. What will be fashionable in this place in five or six years will be biomimics. I take the bet with you. And when I see other waves of technology, and if you develop that, you, you can see what kind of future. Of course, many things are uncertain. Um, are we going to address the uh, climate change? Are we going to address the uh, social inequalities? Are we going to address the global governance, which is needed? Are we going to stay uh, in a world, uh, if we're going to take a metaphor of the world today, is like a plane with many classes for passengers, but uh, no pilot and even no wheel. <laughs> in the, in, therefore, it's clearly uh, something has to, to be done. If it's not done, uh, then uh, the world will be uh, quite challenging. But, we can say a lot about the future, technology, demography, and also the fact that whatever uh, changes are coming, people are looking for freedom, freedom. What do you mean by freedom, though? They want to be free to do whatever they want. They want to be free to uh, make their choice. And I think they want also to be free that their grandchildren are free, that their grandchildren have a choice by education, by health, by... Uh, uh, good governance to have their life uh, chosen. If, if you take these basics, uh, technology, uh, what I call selfish altruism, the fact of looking for the good future of your grandchildren, you have a good views of what the future can be. Do you think we as humans can handle the quality and the, the scale of change that we're now facing? Let's call it disruption as well. <laughs> this assumption at the moment that actually life is still going to be pretty good and we began to hear that a little bit in the first session today. But there you had leading, um, leading figures in business saying things are getting difficult now. 
and will we be able to handle this? First, it depends on where you are. If you are in India or if you are in Africa, you have a more optimistic view of the future because you know that it's difficult to be worse than it is. Second, uh, it has always been very uh, challenging. Look at the change at the beginning of the 20th century when we see happening, uh, arriving cars, electricity, planes, radio, everything which changed our lives more than even what is changing today, then we are not the only generation to see overwhelming changes. But here we have a title of positive future. Yes. Which suggests there's a negative future. Do you think that the danger at the moment is that many people, most people, expect a degree of perfection or life is always going to get better and become more positive? Negative future means future when you only take care of yourself today. In my view, negative means selfishness, narcissism, autism, uh, looking at short term for politicians, looking at polls, for uh, CEOs looking at uh, their uh, share values for next second. That's negative. Positive means when you take care of long term. For instance, I do believe that what is important today is to focus more on investing in infrastructure and infrastructure which have a social impact. If you look at infrastructure with social impact, you make always good decisions. And I think this is the condition, the prerequisite for a positive future. But there we heard Redelio this morning as an investor saying he is deeply concerned about what we can call the hollowing out of the middle of, of, of a community, the um, in greater inequality, the wealth gap widening. Is this something which is going to be difficult for those who expect a degree of positive future to have? Yes, it is. Uh, as we are a global economy and we don't have a global government, we don't have global transfers. And therefore, without global transfers, we don't have a global way to reduce inequalities. Therefore, I don't think that we'll have to have a global government before maybe one century. One day it will happen. But before that, in, in, in due course, we have to take care of that. But it's clear that one of the most important dangers is the wiping out, wipe out of the middle class. This is always a danger for all societies. Do you think that's a real possibility? Yes, it is happening. I very often take the example of a pen. Look at the pens. You have a very uh, expensive pens and you have a very cheap pen, such as this one. But look at the pen in between have disappeared. Then that means, and if you can take this metaphor, that means that the, the pen in between is the middle class. But let me put to you, as part of our Thinking the Unthinkable project, we put this to many people who are in the middle class, who are, have jobs which are traditionally middle class. Yes. They simply can't believe the kind of thing you've just said. They can't conceive of the fact that what they've taken for granted and assumed will be there is not guaranteed anymore. Of course, it's very important to awake people and to awake ourselves. Everything is a challenge, is, that, that is the question of boiling frog. We don't know as long as the boiling frog is not boiling. And we have to understand for ourselves that nothing is certain. There is a potential, amazing potential future, positive future, but we have to take care of it. And in the middle class, you are mentioning what is fundamental is education, education, education all along the life. Lifelong learning. Lifelong learning, find new initiatives, create new ideas, never consider whatever you have is, is forever. Life is not forever. Life can stop any second, and also uh, social status can stop any time. Final thought, Jacques. We had Larry Fink up here, who's been very bleak about the ability of business to cope with all of this. But he did make a point, which I think your work has mentioned, and our work has certainly mentioned, this very serious problem of where are the leaders of the future going to come from to handle this. You've worked in government, yeah. you've worked in institutions. I work in governments, and now I've created a Positive Planet Foundation. We help governments, we help cities, we help companies to organize this transition toward a positive future by helping people to reorganize, reorient their companies, and it works. We have helped a lot of governments and companies. And what tips them over to from being negative, cautious, to actually being positive, even if the realities are really quite significant and forbidding? To be proud in the eyes of their grandchildren. Say that again. To be proud in the eyes of their grandchildren. Grandchildren have a significant role. What, what is coming through from our work certainly is chief executives are always talking about their grandchildren and their children and the impact that that has on them. That's a big change, isn't That's it? That's a big change. Final thought. If we were having this discussion in five years, hopefully we will, what do you think you might be saying about what we should have been saying tonight? 
I, I hope that what we have said to tonight was a program for the next five years and that we'll have succeed. <laughs> Jacques Attali, merci bien. Thank you. Thank you. Merci. So what we've done is given you a glimpse, an insight into the way uh, the future of life and work could develop. You'll each have your own uh, parameters, your own perspectives, but hopefully it's given you a jolt, an encouragement, a thought that actually this is the way I can see things going, particularly just to pick up what Jacques Attali said right at the end. Actually, it's about our grandchildren and what they expect, and many of them are remarkably well-informed once they can talk and walk. Thank you for your attention for the last hour and a quarter.